And we'll just pick up here in verse 1. John 10, 1 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now we know through the scriptures that Jesus says, I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Sad to say that now there are so many others that are saying that, well, as long as you get to God, it's okay, and however which way you believe, it's okay, and that is not the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ was crucified, that he died, and that he rose again for our justification, and that forever he lives and reigns, and right now he is seated at the right hand of God Almighty, ever making intercession for you and I. There is no other way. And the first step is repentance. That is the first step. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and, they, and, he, and he leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth forth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. How simple it is, Jesus, when he called his disciples, what did he say? What did he say to Peter and to Andrew and to the sons of Zebedee? What did he say? Follow me. How simple. That's all he says is follow me. My sheep hear my voice. And we just follow the voice, that still small voice. We follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what Romans chapter 8 is all about. That's the victory chapter, right? To be led of the Spirit. We're going to talk about Romans 7 and 5 and 6 also, but we'll get there. But Jesus, he said, just come to me. And he said he will lead us and he will guide us. Not trying to make our own way, but just simply following following the leading of the Holy Spirit, following Jesus. That's all we have to do. We don't have to try to make our own way. That's frustrating. Because you could get off to the right or get off to the left or you could, it's hard telling where you get end up, right? Then you wonder, am I in the will of God? Am I not in the will of God? What am I doing? I. No, you gotta take I out of the equation. And it has to be all Jesus, all for Jesus, all for Jesus. So, and when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. Didn't the Lord say he would go before us? He goes before us. And the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. So the more time that you spend in the presence of God, the more time that you spend in his presence and ministering unto the Lord and seeking his face, the more you'll know his voice. And then when he says, this is the way, then we just follow. Very simple, right? It comes back to where do you spend your time at? If you spend your time with him, you'll know his voice. Just like somebody, if you, you, you know my voice, of course, because you listen to me week after week and Sunday after Sunday, you know my voice. If I call you on the phone, you know who it is. 
used to before caller ID, amen. <laughs> before caller ID. You would know somebody if they called you, if you heard them. This parable spoke Jesus unto them, but they understood it not, what things they were which he spoke unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am. In John, it's really interesting. You can go through, and there are seven I am's all the way through the book of John. I'll let you study that out for yourself, but they are the I am's. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Now we can't stop there, because we all have quoted that scripture. The thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, don't stop there, because we have to go on. I am come that they may have life, not my life. Remember, we talked about this on Sunday. What is eternal life? Eternal life is God's life. It's the life that Jesus gives. That's eternal life. It's the life that not we trying to live for God, but God living through us. We have to take ourselves totally out of the equation and say, the life that I now live in this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He gave his life away for me, and I gave my life away for him. It's the great exchange. So, the thief comes not but to, for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life, my life, and that they may have it more abundantly, an abundant life. I am, verse 11, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd, shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he's a hireling and doesn't care for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd and I know I know, that word know, I know, intimately. We're going to talk about John 17, we'll go there, but what does Jesus say? I know, I know my sheep. Jesus knows everything about you, he knows everything that you're going through, and loves you. He gave his life for you. He gave his life to you. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know Know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Remember who he's talking to. Who was surrounding him? Jewish people, right? 
and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I laid down my life, that I might take it again. Only God can do that. Jesus is God. Amen? Only God can lay down his life and pick it up again. No man taken it from me, but I have, but I lay it down of myself. The cross was not a tragedy, it was a triumph. The cross was not a tragedy, it was a triumph. He had to die. We're coming up on Resurrection Sunday. He had to die. He had to give his life away so that he could gain our lives. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. That we may be made what? The righteousness of God in what? In Christ Jesus, in his life. We pick up his life and, and that is where righteousness, holiness, sanctification, justification, all of it comes from being baptized into Jesus Christ. Have we not been baptized into Jesus Christ? That means that we are immersed in him and he is immersed into us. We are all quiet. That's exciting. That's good to know, isn't it? I could give up my old wretched life and I can pick up his life. And the life that I now live, I live his life. I allow him to live his life through me and touch every person that comes into contact with my life. He's in every area of my life because it's not my life. Now it's his life. So every person that I come in contact with, every person that I touch, it's Jesus flowing in to their lives also. Every person that you come in contact with, every person's path that you cross, it's just like a river. It's just like a stream that the branches of the stream go out and they touch this and they touch that part and they water this and water that. And every part of your life, which is now his life, touches these people's lives. So, now we'll step down here to verse 25. Now, it's interesting that the Jews, they knew, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they knew that only the Messiah could raise somebody from the dead. Only the Messiah could open the eyes of the blind. Only the Messiah could unstop a deaf and dumb person. Only the Messiah could do those things. They knew that. That was, that was something that was instilled in them. And they seen all these things that Jesus did. And still, what did they say? Show us a sign. <laughs> Do something else. We want to see, we want to see gold dust fall from heaven. We want to see, oh, if we could only see an angel. Oh, if we could. And what did Jesus say? He said, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you're not my sheep. 
as I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them, this is awesome, this ties back into what we talked about on Sunday. What does Jesus say? He says, and I give unto them eternal life. I give unto them, I'm giving my life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And my Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. So people who have an, have an issue with Jesus being God, they need to read Scripture. They need to read the Scriptures. I and my Father are one. Now it's interesting that Jesus said that the sheep that God had gave him, they are in his hand. Okay? Everybody see that? And the sheep are also in the Father's hand. So where are we? No man can pluck us out of Jesus' hand, and no man can pluck us out of the Father's hand. Like the cleft of the rock, he's got us. He has us. No man, nobody can pluck us out. So, in John chapter 12, since we're here in John, John chapter 12. Now this is when Jesus is giving and getting ready to give his last minute instructions to his disciples right before his crucifixion. In verse 23, and Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Now let that sink in for a minute, and let's go to verse 25. And he that loveth his life, my life, this is my life, this is, you know, this is my life. He that loveth his life, what does Jesus say? Shall lose it. And he that hateth his life, in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Now, unless a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. What are we to do with our old life? What are we to do with self? It has to die. It has to be crucified. We can't crucify it. That's the Holy Spirit's job, right? But we look to him, we look to him to prune off the branches that are not of him. We look to him to prune off the parts of our lives that we have given to him and now it's his life living through us to take those branches away, to take those parts away, that they be burned up and they can't be grafted back in. Praise God for that. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it into life eternal. If a man serve me, now 
if a man serves me, let him follow me. How simple. How absolutely simple. You want to serve the Lord? What's he say? Follow me. And where I am, there shall my, also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. If any man serves me, follows me, gives up his life, lays down the, lays down the low life and picks up the life of Christ and lets Christ live through him, the high life, the eternal life. It says here in Scripture, my Father will honor him. Why does God answer our prayers? Why does God honor us? Because we follow the great shepherd. Because we have given our lives away and have picked up his life and allow his life to live through us. And now God honors us because we have done away with the low life and now are living the high life. Pretty simple, right? Instead of trying to figure out, well, if I pray for this, I wonder if God will answer. I wonder if this is God's will. I wonder if well, I got to dig it out of Scripture, and if I confess it, and if I if I found it here in Scripture, so I'll just pray it. And a lot of work in that, isn't there? This is simple. This is so simple. I just lay down my life, and then I allow Him to live through me to live his life through me, that he is my all in all. I don't have to question, well, is this God's will or which direction do I, I don't have to do that. I just follow the lamb. I just follow the shepherd. I just follow his leading. I hear his voice because I spend all my time with him. I spend every moment Praying, talking with him, conversing with him, acknowledging him in all of my ways. He directs my path. He honors the things that I say because the words that I speak, they're not my words. Whose words are they? They're his words. Take no thought what you're going to say in that hour. It's the Holy Spirit that will speak through you if you allow him. If you give yourself over to him. Remember we talked about being possessed? Being so possessed by God that he takes full control? You know, a lot of people talk about demon possession. That's the other side of the coin. Let's talk about God possession. We are his possession. He has possessed us, purchased us with his blood. And we can be so God-possessed that he controls our thinking, that he controls our everything, our moves, our actions. He controls it all. When a person gives themselves over to something, it becomes an obsession, right? People can become obsessed with food because they just give themselves over. People watch the Food Channel all the time and how to fix this and how, yeah, I know. They become obsessed with whatever they're spending their time with. Now you can take that, good or bad, whatever you expose yourself to, that is what's going to dominate your life. I have several interests, but I only have one hobby. And my hobby, what I spend all of my time, what I spend all of my energy, what I spend everything on, is God himself. Now, I do have other interests, but they're just interests. 
That's all they are. They're not an obsession. So. If any man serve me, let him follow me. We've seen other places in Scripture. If any man wants to follow me, what do you have to do? Pick up your cross, which is a place of death, and follow me. You're going to have to, you, the self, is going to have to die. And then it has to be all me. Verse 27, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I into, or came unto this hour. I, I was thinking about this this morning. Can you imagine, can you imagine that knowing all of your life you were going to be put to death in the most horrific to raise again so that many sons and daughters could be brought unto justifiably exalted him and given him a name above every name at the name of Jesus every knee bows every tongue confesses Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father all right Romans chapter 5, or no, before we go there, since we're here in John, John 17, 3. Oh, we probably better go back to verse 1. Sorry, Brian. John 17, 1. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. How powerful we live, you and I. Our soul, heart, the whole motive of our whole entire being and our whole entire existence is that we live for the glory of God. That's it. That's it. How simple. We follow the Lamb. We allow Him to live through us for the glory of God. For His glory. Not for my gain. Not for me to have things or what's that do to the prosperity gospel message that's being spread about. Or the bless me message. No, we live for the glory of God, for his glory. That's why we live. Because he lives, I live. As thou hast given, hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. I love this. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal. This is what it's all about. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. That I may know you. That I may know you to the fullest. We see that in Philippians chapter 3. That I may know him. That I may know him. Know him intimately. Know, have the mind of Christ. Have the heart of Christ to live and move and have my being in Christ to live for the glory of God. Now, Romans chapter 5.
Romans chapter 5 verse 1 begins and it says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. How? Through our unions, through our oneness with Jesus Christ. That's how, right? Not by our works, not by anything that we've done, but through our oneness and through our union with Jesus Christ.